Prisons have been privatized before. Louisiana first privatized its penitentiary in 1844, just nine years after it opened. America has always thrived on cheap and available labor, so the transition from free slave labor to indentured uh, penitentiary labor has always been a part of the foundation of this country. You can see just from 2000 to 2016 alone, federal private prisons have exploded by 120% and private immigration detention centers have exploded by over 400%. We're gonna explore how that happened and what policies led to that and how can we protect that from happening again. Public enemy number one in the United States is drug abuse. I mean, it is necessary to wage a new offensive. Here lies the birth of Nixon's war on drugs. Now a whole new source of funding for all different type of agents. This new initiative created new funding for drug control agencies. Now, during the mid-70s, there was something that happened that affected this new prison industrial complex. Some places began to decriminalize marijuana possessions, which led to uh, a decline in arrest and captivity. So the plan on the war on crime had already set forth the economical path that they did not want to deviate away from. Because the idea of privatizing prison was already set in motion, there was nothing that was going to stand in the way. This information is public information from Time uh, website. There are two major companies that have a long relationship with the United States since the birth of the private prison uh, complex and, and the private prison industry. Uh, Core Civic, which used to be Corrections Corporations of America, they were formed in 1983. They, they were founded to operate immigration detention centers as well as private uh, prison facilities, uh, which was backed by government tax dollars. Core Civic owns and manages 21 immigration and custom enforcement facilities with a combined detention capacity of 17,243. Remember, that's the number one company that deals with the government. Who's number two? GEO Group. A uh, $3 billion private prison industry. GEO was formerly known as a Wack and Hutton Corrections Company. They changed their name because they had so many lawsuits and egregious uh, complaints of brutality. Prisons are privately run. There's less accountability. There's less transparency. And the motive, the sheer motive, is profit. Now, the thing that you'll notice uh, about GEO which was formed in 1984, as well as um, Core Civic, because it falls into the timeline of what is happening politically. Sure, you can see how policy and, and business now are kind of creating a conflict of interest. Information regarding GEO can be found directly on their website. Say no to drugs, the D.A.R.E. program. Our young people are helping us lead the way. Not long ago in Oakland, California, I was asked by a group of children what to do if they were offered drugs. And I answered, just say no. In the 1980s, Ronald Reagan reinforced and expanded Nixon's war on drugs. Nancy Reagan actually created a just say no campaign. And after that, it kind of influenced harsher and more strict uh, drug penalties. Now, I gotta take you back to the fact that Core Civic, uh, CCA, was founded in 1983, in January 1983, and got their first contract, you know, barely in November. So in 83, the prisons are built, and as soon as the prisons are built, they're running to pass laws to get these private prisons filled. Fast forward, here we go. Policy, Sentencing Reform Act of 1984. Now we can directly say in 83, private prisons were built, 83, uh, Civic Corps, 84, GEO, and now in 1984, we have a direct policy that's connected with a government contract. All right, we got private prisons, the war on drugs, and now we have a specific policy that mandates uh, mandatory minimums, and they use mandatory minimum as a guise of equality. 
because the only way we can make sure that things are going fair is if we sentence everybody with the same mandatory sentence. That's the logic. This specific article that I'm uh, reciting and quoting from is from the History Channel and it is available online. You should be able to Google it and find it. Two years later, on top of the discretionary and mandatory, they targeted a drug abuse. So they came out with a specific Anti-Drug Abuse Act in 1986, which uh, provided mandatory minimums specifically for drug laws. And then that is where it targeted uh, five grams of crack, which would gave you a, a five year minimum sentence and compared to 500 grams of powder. So this is when the specific policy was put into place, 1986. Coincidentally, CCA goes public with a $9 IPO on the stock market. According to a document on the CIA.gov website, it says that in early as 1987, the government knew that... Um, that there were agencies placing drugs in that that were smuggling drugs into the United States. We may have unwittingly have been subsidizing uh, assets who are engaged in drug trafficking. The sale of narcotics. In I will tell you, Director Deutsch, as a former Los Angeles police narcotics detective, that the agency has dealt drugs through throughout this country for a long time. So that means in '83. We have Civic Corps, CCA built. Then we have an 84 G, uh, GEO built. Then we have an 80, uh, 83 is when uh, Civic Corps gets their contract. And then now, now that they have a contract, they have an incentive to explode the prison population. 1984, we have the Sentencing Reform Act. Now we have 1986, the Anti-Drug uh, Abuse Act. Now this is the specific uh, minimum uh, five-year mandatory for crack. Why is the Clinton crime bill so controversial? Because some believe statistically that it has created a condition of uh, mass incarceration. It doesn't matter whether or not they're the victims of society. The end result is they're about to knock my mother on the head with a lead pipe, shoot my sister, beat up my wife, take on my sons. So I don't want to ask, what made them do this? They must be taken off the street. Every time Richard Nixon, when I was running in 1972, would say law and order, the Democratic mantra, the response was law and order with justice. Whatever that meant. And I'd say lock the SOBs up. The crime bill was drafted by um, Joe Biden, whose quote was lock the SOBs up. What was the 1994 crime bill? The Violent Crime Control and Law Enforcement Act was a lengthy crime control bill that was put together over the course of six years. Provisions implemented many things, including three strikes mandatory life sentence for repeat offenders, money to hire 100,000 new police officers, and $9.7 billion in funding for prison. The crime bill sentencing guideline also applied to those charged with federal crimes. The vast majority, an estimated 87% of the country's prison population, is housed in state prisons. However, the 22 years since the bill was passed, federal populations more than doubled. In 1994, the Bureau of Prison held 95,162 inmates. From 1920 to 2014, you can see as soon as they started creating policy that there was an explosion. It was an explosion. And Republicans and Democrats are both to blame because they both created policies that exacerbated this issue. By the time that the crime bill actually passed, violent crime was on a decline. It had already begun to decline. When I signed this crime bill, we together are taking a big step toward bringing the laws of our land back into line with the values of our people. Mass incarceration did not just explode under Bill Clinton. Make no mistake, 
In the last 20 years, it has exploded. Federal private prison has grown over 120%, and private immigration detention centers from 2000 to 2016 has grown by 420%. He was the president who actually signed it. And her I'm sorry for the consequences that were unintended and that have very unfortunate impact on people's lives. I've seen on top of these private corporations having uh, tax dollars fund their private operations that are poorly managed, um, there's other businesses that benefit from prison labor. Remember, prison once they're in prison, they're they're leased out to agencies. So companies like Walmart, AT&T, Whole Foods, and Victoria's Secret, they rely on the labor of incarcerated people. So there is a circle, there is an economy built and surrounded uh, 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 around this. Every year, Walmart has to dispose of millions of dollars worth of customer returns, buybacks, overstocks, shelf pulls, etc. Excess inventories, the giant retailer sells this merchandise to liquidators who scrub the products of any Walmart serial numbers, UPC barcodes, and then resells them to aftermarket retailers who resell them to the public. Workers used to strip these Walmart products are clean or often prison laborers under a program made possible by the federal government. In effect, the liquidators are partially subsidized by federal taxpayers. You gotta ask yourself who's getting rich off of this prison industrial complex? Vanguard Group and Fidelity Investments are America's top two 401k providers. So most likely your 401k is going to have a, a, a GEO or a core civic in a portfolio. The average person doesn't know that their retirement funds are going towards um, investing in private uh, prison stocks. Surprisingly, the retirement funds from public employees in New York and California have a combined 60 million that go towards investing in CCA and uh, GEO stocks, $30 million each. So teachers' uh, retirement is based on investments in prison stocks. Unbelievable. Prisons are big lobbyists. So, of course, GEO and Core Civic have funneled millions of dollars into both uh, Republican and a uh, Democratic uh, campaign, as much as big oil, big pharma, and gun lobbyists. As much as 10 million on candidates since 1989 has been spent nearly 25 million on lobbying efforts. Meanwhile, these private companies have seen their revenue soar. Private companies house nearly half of the nation's immigrant detainees, compared to 25% a decade ago. Just like in the 70s, when the decriminalization lowered the crime rate, crime is on the, had been on the decline. So the states went into contract with these private prisons. They didn't read the contract that said if they didn't fill the beds at a certain capacity, that they would actually tax the um, they would tax the the states and the federal government who would impose the tax on us to make sure that they were guaranteed to get paid for running and operating the facilities. As crime was going down, state government began to ban private prisons. The private prisons uh, uh, are threatened to sue the federal government. They won. They won the right to obtain a detention, an immigration detention center in California. Also, they were awarded funds to build and operate the facilities to house um, detained uh, asylum seekers and people caught for uh, and arrested for illegal immigration. So now we've seen the Republicans initiate the policy. We've seen the Democrats uh, um, uh, add to it with the crime bill and uphold with giving funds to open facilities. We've seen Civic Corps, aka Corrections Corporations of America, receive government contracts. We've seen them give back to political campaigns, which is a full circle that revolves around tax dollars. From 2000 to 2016, we've seen uh, an explosion of more than 400% of uh, immigration detention center activity. And remember, it don't matter if it's Republican or Democrat, 
They both have received uh, contributions to their political funds, and they both created policies that have exacerbated and created mass incarceration. On top of that, after the Democratic Party gave these companies $1 billion, hey, you remember that group we've been talking about this whole time? GEO? Yeah. They took that $1 billion and uh, took 225000 of it and donated it to Donald Trump. Hey, don't get mad at me. You support it, right? You got a 401k. 